Hi, my name is Dr. David Crownover, and I'm a board-certified gynecologist. I'd like to talk to you today about various forms of hysterectomies. Hysterectomies can be performed for various reasons, certainly the most common being either irregular bleeding or fibroids or growths in the wall of the uterus. But hysterectomies can also be performed in various uh, ways or various forms. For example, hysterectomies can be performed through an incision on the abdomen, what we call abdominal hysterectomies. Hysterectomies can also be performed through the vagina, or what we call vaginal hysterectomies. And hysterectomies can be performed laparoscopically, or through small incisions in the abdomen, much like an appendix or a gallbladder would be removed, what we refer to as laparoscopic hysterectomy. Specifically, I'd like to talk to you about a laparoscopic supracervical hysterectomy today in a little more detail. So what is a laparoscopic supracervical hysterectomy? This is a form of a hysterectomy that's performed, again, through small incisions on the abdomen, usually three incisions on the abdomen, what we refer to as band-aid incisions because they're small incisions, in which the uterus can be removed through these small incisions. So patients often ask, now the uterus is this large, or maybe enlarged even more, but you tell me that you're going to remove it through an incision that's this small. How, does that, how is that possible? Really what makes this procedure possible is a device called a morselator. And a morselator is simply a device that's placed through one of the small incisions and allows the uterus to be removed in pieces. And so that allows a large uterus to be removed through a small incision. So what are the advantages of a laparoscopic supracervical hysterectomy? Why would I want to perform it this way? Clearly the advantage is the recovery. In most cases, if everything goes as planned, the patient can go home the same day of the procedure. So this makes a hysterectomy, removal of the uterus, an outpatient procedure. And this is very common for patients to go home the same day with this form of hysterectomy. In terms of getting back to work, Again, everyone recovers differently, so depending on your medical condition, how the procedure goes, and what you do uh, work-wise after the procedure, very often patients can get back to normal activities or back to work within two to three weeks. Again, that's about half the recovery time versus an incision on the abdomen or an abdominal hysterectomy. So that sounds great. Why would we not perform them all this way? So what are the disadvantages to a laparoscopic supracervical hysterectomy. Disadvantages include the fact that you do have to continue having pap smears after the procedure because the cervix remains in place. The uterus is removed, but the bottom part of the cervix remains in place, so it is recommended to continue having pap smear screening after this procedure. The second disadvantage is that there is a percentage of patients, most studies say something like 2% of patients, will have what we refer to as cyclic spotting. So not a full menstrual cycle, but some spotting when it's time to have a normal menstrual cycle. And again, this is not common for it to happen, but sometimes very frustrating for patients when they've had a hysterectomy and continue to have some spotting after the fact. Now many patients feel like this is a reasonable trade-off for the dramatically different or improved recovery time, but it is something that patients need to be aware of that that's possible. So hopefully this gives you some overview of what a laparoscopic supracervical hysterectomy is, how it's performed, and what makes that possible, meaning the morselator, what the advantages of this type of hysterectomy are, and the disadvantages to this particular type of procedure. As with any procedure, certainly we recommend that you discuss your particular issue with your physician. Thank you.